Welcome back. Today we're going to talk about paces, specifically run paces, but this, these tips apply to any sport. And why do we want to know our paces? Well, we want to know our paces so that we get tired the right way. We get tired in a way that supports our goals for the session, the physiology that we're seeking to train. But also, we don't want to spend a lot of time going way faster than required to meet our goals. And we want to understand where our paces and our powers fit into the requirements for our goal events. And this is a great technique that I'm going to show you. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to continue to work with the three lap test that I've been talking about the last couple episodes. So remember that it was a 4K loop and we did it easy, zone one, then we sped up a bit, zone two, and sped up a bit more, zone three. And then we're going to shrink me down and we've got my data table here. In addition, back in December, I did a 10K race and that gave me my zone four paces. I was about 40 minutes, four minutes a K for that. So this column here is K pace and you can use mile pace if you prefer. And then from the test, it was the max heart rate for each lap, one, two, three. Now I found the max on those shorter segments has more information than using the average. The reason being is across the lap, particularly that first 10 minutes, the heart rate's coming up. So the average will understate your cardiac response. And so if you use the max per lap, uh, you'll find that it works better when you're coming into training. And then for zone four, I used 156 plus I filled in. In the race, it was a hot day. I actually finished up in the low 160s, low to mid 160s. But in Colorado, when it's cooler, I'll be low 150s running that pace. And so with the zone four and zone five type paces, you're likely to find there's much more information in the pace than the heart rate response. The heart rate response is gonna depend quite a bit on temperature, the length of the segment, and other outside factors. So bear that in mind with the higher zones. Pace and power is likely to be much more informative for you. Then what I want you to do is I want you to convert these paces to times for 10K, half marathon, as well as marathon. And it depends on the event you're working on. I like to look at all of these. And you could also put in a column for your 5K pace if you use that uh, as well. Now, so we have a race here at 40 minutes for a 10K. And I did a half marathon in January. I actually went a little quicker than that. And what you'll find is 10K zone four. Uh, for most of us, zone three is going to be that half marathon. And zone two is going to be that marathon. Now, it depends on how long your event is, uh, whether you're going to be a lot faster or slower than me, how well trained you are for the event, particularly these longer events, you'll see more of a decline. You'll need to have a lower average pace. But these are good starting points. And if you're a triathlete, what you can do is you can take your splits off the bike in a race and then bring them back to this table and see where it stacks up. Now, for a 70.3 athlete and an Ironman athlete, this can be really valuable. It can show you, it can answer the question, was I running to my potential and did my training line up with what I actually delivered on race day? So if there's a big gap, in other words, the pace is blowing out off the bike relative to your training paces, couple ideas there. First, you probably got your swim and your bike mispaced because you weren't able to run to your capacity. And the other thing is while you improve your swim and bike fitness, and pace control, you can afford to actually run a little easier because you don't need to be generating that fatigue in your run training by running faster, way faster than you are on game day. Likewise, 70.3 athlete. If your best case scenario is zone one or two training pace off the bike, then you do not need to be doing a lot of hard running, zone four, zone five running in your program. You're much better off getting stronger on the bike, getting fitter, in the water so that you get to the run and you're able to access your existing run fitness. Now, pure runners, 
This, is, this method is a little bit different than the VDOT method, but it's just as valid because what you'll find is as these distance stack up, you're gonna have to step down the pace. And so it's just another tool for you to have in your toolbox, and I hope it helps you. Thanks for listening. If you like stuff like this, subscribe to my YouTube channel. We got videos most weeks for you. Have a good one.